so you never would like walk by that mirror and think, oh, just one more time. No, because you know what happened. I went up to Marion's and stayed there for about five months, I think. And when I came down is when I had this man, gentleman well, who wanted to me to play golf, and he had a friend he was bringing along. And I said, fine. But then the day, the day it was time to do it, I'd been Christmas shopping, and I thought, oh, I can't walk all around the place. Then something went down my back and said, go, go, go. Because I, I already told the man, I said, I don't think, I'll, could we do it next Tuesday or something? I wouldn't have probably met my husband if we'd have done that because it was Christmas. It was uh, he, well, he'd have had to go back to where he was working, and I just went. Something went went down my back like that and said, "Go, go, 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 go." So all of a sudden, after saying, "Oh no, I can't. I'll do a Tuesday," I said, "Well, you know, maybe I'll go." That was the day I met the man I married. I just fell for him like a ton of bricks. He was the handsomest man I'd ever seen, and Randy's grandmother said the same thing. Let me ask you another question. Um, you said to me before that you did a film with Clark Gable. Yes, I At did. the time that you worked with Clark Gable, were people regularly calling him King, or did that happen? Oh, honey, that that was a short life, life thing. I played, he played a, a, oh, I've forgotten what he was, but it was his wife, and I just played the short uh, thing with him. But he asked me if he could drive me home, and I said, thank you, no, I have my car and chauffeur here. And so for, for years later, I was the girl who said no to Clark Cable. <laughs> I mean, all he said was what he could have given me a lift, you know. But anyway, he was a charming man, very nice. And uh, so, and of course, you know how big he went over. And, uh, and of course, I guess everybody else, other people know too, he, he was a very great success. And uh, and I remember, I think he's the one. My mother was walking down the uh, the street, you know, in the in the uh, where we were working, and he saw her, and he came running down to her, and he said, "Oh, Mr. Parsons, nice to see you." And it, well, boy, around our house, he just well, oh, was he something else? <laughs> because of course, you see, he had remembered my mother. He remembered her name. He t went over to her when he could have gone with a lot of other people to say hello and so on. He must have just liked her, you know. My mother was very likable. And I How, think he, uh, we talked a little bit before. Uh, excuse me a second. Yeah. C could she bring out that she was Clark Gable's first leading lady? This was his first MGM film. Oh, that's good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's yes. Oh, that's yes. very yes. important. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yes. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, honey. Can you say that? <laughs> oh, yes, that's okay, the truth. The film was the easiest way. Yes, the easiest Clark way. Clark Gable played a laundryman. And was his, I was his wife. You played his wife. He was a, a, a laundryman. His part, of course, was smaller than yours. But it was his first MGM film. Right. And from that on, he just soared. Oh, he soared. But, but women were sending him flowers. One, some, one of the women. But talk about the film as the easiest way. Say that, and then go into Clark Gable. All right. Yeah, the easiest you. way. Uh, you, you want to ask me that, and then I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah. Tell me about the the, uh, the first movie that uh, Clark Gable made. Well, I think it was the easiest way, and I played his wife. We, he, uh, he was a laundryman in, in this, and I played his wife. And so uh, he asked me that night, I think you might enjoy this, he asked me that night, being a very pleasant, kindly man, he said, could he give me a lift home? And I said, uh, oh no, I said, I have my own car and chauffeur, but thank you very much. And, uh, and we liked each other, you know, and, he, and so, uh, so somebody got a hold of the story, and I became the girl that said no to Clark Gable. I mean, I said, I only said thank you very much, but no, I have my own car. But that thing went around even today, or maybe not today, but a couple of, I think, once ago, somebody remembered the girl who said no to Clark Gable. So, yeah. so you told me before when we were talking that when you went to the Hearst Mansion that it wasn't wild, but everyone thinks about your era as being the really wild days of Hollywood. Uh, well, I know I wasn't. People, were there like the Valentino crowd or the... Well, he was the, dead by that time. See, I, I didn't come out here until about... Uh, uh, what When was it? Do you remember, Randy? 26. When, 26. See, I didn't come when out here in 26. 1926. 
So he died he just the, before. Like he right. died he, in uh, in New York. But what I'd about say. what about like the Barrymore, like Fairbanks from swinging around the from the chandeliers? You you don't was that another crowd that was like more you know that's been written about that, that, that who was, did what did you say that, that Douglas Fairbanks was a very wild guy who was always swinging around and having these wild parties. I mean, it, oh, you I don't, don't remember any that. of that. I don't believe that, and I knew him. He was charming. I don't believe that. I I mean, I tell we may have had people in. Sure, he may have had parties. I mean, we all had went to parties and things. But I never heard anything uh, that was uh, that was detrimental to him. Now you were with me when we saw him one time, Randy. Remember? That was Doug Jr. Oh, was that Doug she Jr.? She made two pictures with Douglas Fairbanks Jr. He was her leading man in two pictures, and uh, they had a. He's marvel. lovely. Yeah. yeah, very charming. He was so nice. Yeah, I liked working with him, but I didn't feel any. Uh, a romantic tr thing or anything, but I liked him terrifically as a friend, you know. And uh, yes, he's very and very lovely to work with, very nice. And somebody uh, then, the, who was the man that got the? Uh, mm, no, I think it was Crawford. Somebody got a, a note, all wrapped up and and uh, was sent to him. And uh, I think there were rumors that somebody had said that I said to her, don't, don't, or to him, don't fall now for her, and so, or something like that. Uh, however, I wouldn't want to use that because I didn't see it myself, you know. Well, I'm, tell me about Lon Chaney. Well, I was told that Lon Chaney asked for me. And yet, uh, the, all the things I read indicated that he didn't take much interest in his leading ladies. I mean, that he, um, you know, he was glad he worked with them, and, but, but somebody said he even said that he didn't say goodbye sometimes and everything. But I had a wonderful, very lovely time with him. We both agreed that so much of the of acting was in the eyes, you know, because that's where you tell a lot. And so uh, we had quite a thing on that. And. Uh, he, uh, no, I found him very charming. I, Tell I, me about the thing about turning the head, what he said about turning the head, Lon Chaney with a hat. Oh, yes. Uh, he, oh, uh, Lon Chaney, of course, mostly did these, you know, uh, horrible looking things and everything else. But on this one, he was doing a, a normal gentleman who was, but he was a policeman, I think, as I remember. And his feet hurt him, and he had, I mean, he was kind of, you know, down. Uh, but he always he did things that called your attention to him. I mean, for instance, uh, there was one scene where he normally he had a lot of stuff with faces and stuff, but this was, he was wearing his own face, and he walked into this restaurant and sat down, and all of a sudden he just kind of went with his hat, kind of pulled it back, you know, and then a little later on, I think he. Uh, pushed it back. He was, he, in other words, he was working constantly. You didn't think so because, of course, you know, people do move, move their hats and everything, but I was watching him to see what he would do because normally he had these weird, uh, you know, things that he did, and but this time he was just playing a straight lead. So I wanted to, I was watching him to see how he did it, and so when I watched this, and all of a sudden I saw this hat, and the hat went back, and then I nothing happened and all of a sudden the hat went this way and I realized then that he was constantly moving I mean you know getting your attention even although you didn't realize it you see today we call it scene stealing well actually at the time I'm thinking of we weren't in the scene stealing we we were eating our lunch he was in other words uh, we went into this place we were out on location I think and we went in on this place and uh, we both sat down. I sat down first and ordered something, and then he came in, and then he ordered something to eat. And then as when I noticed the hats being used, you know, and then you wait a little while, and then the hat would go back. So then I realized he's working all the time, really, using that hat as a, a, a something to watch, you see. And uh, so I, uh, I, I really enjoyed working with him, and he did with me, because we both agreed that the eyes said so much, and we talked that over. You know, normally I read that he didn't even say hello to his leading ladies as a rule or goodbye or anything, but this time apparently, well, of course, then I heard he'd even asked for me, so I don't know. He may have just liked my work. And because, see, I'd made two pictures before I made, it was either two or three, I've forgotten, before I worked with him. 